back to News Geelong. The Honourable Simon Crean, Federal Minister for Regional Australia, Regional Development and Local Government, was keynote speaker at the SEGRA Forum to meet with leading practitioners, business and government on key issues for regional Australia. Merrill Friend reports. Sustainable economic growth for regional Australia, that's what SEGRA stands for and the National SEGRA Conference was held at Costa Hall at the Deakin Waterfront Campus. We were able to speak to the Honourable Simon Crean about the whole area of Geelong and regional Victoria. Well, it's, SEGRA is sustainable economic growth and that's what we're really challenging the regions to look to their strengths in. They know their strengths best of all. What we want them to do is to develop those strengths, but we don't expect them to do it on their own. It is a partnership, partnership with government. Government's prepared to pay the resources, but in response to initiatives that come from the regions, from the bottom up, but they've got to be proposals that stack up. We don't want wish lists. So it's a great opportunity to engage that debate. So there's people from many different areas and obviously locally. Um, do you think that the regional areas have been um, neglected in the past? Well, people will have their own views about that. We certainly have never neglected them. In all the time I've been in Labor governments, we've understood the importance of regions and empowering regions. They are our strengths. In a patchwork economy, the regions are the patches. And if we're going to get the best out of the patches, we've got to involve those people who know their patch uh, best of all. But they need resources to help them do it. And the last budget, was a huge commitment to uh, resources for regional Australia. Um, the Regional Development Australia Fund exists, it's a billion dollars over four years, but we've also got funds for higher education, for um, health, uh, and we've got the National Broadband Rollout. Now they're the big ones. The challenge for the regions is to creatively join up those dots and look at ways in which the National Broadband Network can develop applications that develop better economic opportunities, e-commerce, and we've just heard good examples in the agricultural sector, e-health and e-education, the service delivery. Because whilst the National Broadband Network and the connectivity is the enabler, so too is skills development. Now, if we want to develop the, the economic diversity of regions and encourage people to come to them, you've also got to build the livability of the regions. And so we're looking at this in a holistic way, but it's the regions themselves that are best at joining all of those dots. We want them to become the dot joiners and work with us in partnership to produce the outcome. And the growth of the Geelong area is already an example of that. Geelong's a very good example of where the diversification happened. I remember these wool stores when I was in the Stormont and Packers Union. But this is something that's transformed from the primary industry sector to the tertiary sector. And the tertiary sector in education services, third largest export now, and the services sector is the big employer uh, in this country. In terms of agriculture and resources, we're not moving away from the strength of those as our comparative advantage, but it's the services dimension that has made all of those things competitive and why the rest of the world looks to us to provide those solutions. The rest of the world needs food security. It looks to Australia, not just for the commodity, but the know-how from which it happens. They want energy and resource security. Other countries have got resources, but they can't extract them as efficiently as us, or as safely, or rehabilitate the land as well. This is the services dimension of our traditional base that we build upon. From the Deakin Waterfront Campus, Merrill Friend, News Geelong. Thank you, Merrill. A Drysdale olive farmer and oil producer has worked hard through the season to produce gold medal olive oils at the Royal Melbourne Fine Food Awards, as Debbie Meany reports. Lighthouse olive oil has had some recent success in Melbourne and in Sydney, and I caught up with Ray Beedon about their wonderful oils. Mm -hmm. We've uh, entered in the Royal Melbourne uh, show and we won champion in class of uh, our Pickwell oil. 
um, and previously we've won it twice in Sydney and uh, yes we're very happy and um, hopefully you know we can uh, do it again next year. And what does it take to get something like that? I mean Sydney that's pretty special. Uh, a lot of it's in the, the growing of it, um, picking, making sure you pick at the right time and most of it's in the processing of the olives. And what sort of yield are we talking about for a tonne of fruit, perhaps? Um, we work oh, probably about 200 litres to a tonne of fruit. Um, works out about 20% per olive. We, we test our fruit with a, um, an analyzer, which tells us the yield, and that's when we decide how we'll pick it and when we'll pick it. So how many trees are actually here? Uh, we have 6,500 trees on the property. It's 165 hectares, uh, acres, sorry. Um, that's in four different groves and they're all grown at different times. Um, they go from about 13 years to about seven years. And do the age of the tree affect the oil at all or is there something else that affects the uh, olive oil quality? Uh, no, uh, I think the age eventually will but at the moment because we got young trees, we call them young, um, we get uh, a really nice, um, a really good oil and every olive variety tastes different so every year it's, uh, it's quite exciting actually because every year you don't know what you're going to get. At Lighthouse Olive Oil Grove this is Debbie Meany for News Geelong. Thank you Debbie. The SEGRA National Forum was a critical learning environment to consider strategies and steps to continue to promote Australia's regional communities as critical players in the next 20 years of national growth. Meryl Friend has more. We're here at Deakin Waterfront with the final day of the SEGRA conference and we were able to speak with Councillor Rod McDonald about the outcomes. Oh look, it's been a terrific uh, few days Meryl. We've uh, been able to canvas a lot of issues that are of interest to regional Australia right across the, the country and uh, yeah, I think we've um, put up a pretty good program this year. What's the likely um, outcome from this conference? Where will all this information go to from here? Look, I think we've done quite a bit of case study work. There's a, you know, people from cities all around uh, and towns and remote areas for all around Australia and really looking at experiences, getting ideas from what people have uh, discussed, what's been talked about and particularly the spotlights where we've had speakers talk but then we've had uh, a lot of uh, group discussions and, and uh, ideas thrown around and I'm sure they'll be taking uh, elements of that back to their own communities to, to implement. And so uh, they will be having another national conference next year, the SEGRA conference, do you know where that will be held? Yeah, the conference is going to be up central New South Wales coast, uh, up around the Gosford area, so um, yeah, they're very much looking forward to being the 16th uh, host of the SEGRA. From Deakin Waterfront, Merrill Friend, News Geelong. This is News Geelong as we go to a break and return with sport and weather after this.